Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under, because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks. Hold the cross high, cause we're Catholics. Fight the good fight with the truth. Stand tall with the truth. I'm a warrior for Christ. I'm in love with the truth. Love God, save souls, slay error. Go stronger. Holy hour of power. My name is Jesse Romero, the Latin lover of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Latin lover of Our Lady. And my name is Terry Barber, the Lebanese lover of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Lebanese lover of Our Lady. And I'm honored to be here to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Blue collar Catholicism, straight talk, two Catholics with a Ph.D. in common sense, clarity with charity. And we're both reporting for duty, sir. Amen, brother. Let's get some soul food, brother. I love Let's soul go right food. to the soul food yeah, section Yeah, man, that's here. it. It's the best thing. Got a lot to talk about today. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, good show. We want. We need to, as uh, as the as they say, uh, for those people that work in the Coast Guard. Yeah. We ha- we have to be like a lighthouse. You got it. Exposing the darkness in this culture of death we live in. So today's gospel at Holy Mass, yep. Luke chapter seven verses thirty one to thirty five. Yep. Very short. Mm-hmm. But right to the point, it's talking about here, about Jesus and John the Baptist. St. Luke is talking about both of them. And here's what today's gospel says. To what then shall I compare the men of this generation? This is Jesus speaking. And what are they like? So Jesus is criticizing the Pharisees and Sadducees here. He says, he says about them, they are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We piped to you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say, you Pharisees and Sadducees, you say, he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Pharisees and Sadducees, behold, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by all her children, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus is comparing the generation of Jews in his day, his generation, yeah. uh, especially led by the Pharisees and Sadducees. He's saying that he's comparing them to children. They're always complaining. In other words, regardless, kids, these the Pharisees and Sadducees and these malcontents, regardless of what Jesus does, or, you know, he's using a metaphor like, regardless of what games are suggested by others, you know, whether Jesus is being joyous, you know, we piped, uh, you know, we, 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 we piped to you. I mean, songs are being played. It's, a, it's joyful. Mm-hmm. Uh, or whether Jesus is being somber. We wailed. In other words, that's John the Baptist. His ministry was more somber. Jesus' ministry was more joyous. Okay? So whether John's preaching... You know whether whether this was uh, being used, they rejected it. They rejected the the somber mood of Saint John the Baptist, and they also refused to listen to the joyous preaching of Jesus Christ. In other words, they're malcontents. They're not going to listen to anything regarding Jesus Christ as being their Messiah. And Jesus ends by saying that wisdom is justified. What does he mean that in verse thirty five? Yet wisdom is justified by all her children. It means that God's children. We recognize the wisdom that was announced by Jesus Christ, the joyful gospel. But we also recognize the wisdom announced by John the Baptist. Repent and believe. And both of them are invitations to the kingdom, to the Catholic Church. And uh, if you if you reject John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, if you refuse both, well, guess what? You won't be saved. Well said, Jesse. And, you know, this ties into Bishop Sheen's quote of the day, the scripture verse. So I want to bring Bishop Sheen into the room. Please come, Bishop Sheen. Oh, Sheen ahead with that choo-choo print train. Jesse, here is what he says about us today. Bishop Sheen says, if he was in the room right now with us, he'd say, Jesse, Terry, show me your hands. Do you have scars from giving? Show me your feet. Are they wounded in service? Show me your heart. 
Have you left a place for divine love? Jess, when I read that Bishop Sheen quote, I've read it for years. It really shows me that, hey, Barbara, wake up, man. Be generous. Give. Give until it hurts. And I think of that on how odd that is to a culture that's all about me, the narcissistic culture that says, what's in it for me? And I think of that, and I ask our listeners, think to yourself, show me your hands. Do you have scars from giving? Not just to uh, to, uh, Virgin Most Powerful. Yeah, thank you for your sacrifices. But to those in need, are you giving the gospel? Are, Are you paying a price for sharing the gospel. I'm just today's culture, just by the very fact that you bring God up into your conversation with people, you're going to be persecuted. Show me your feet. Have you been walking for the Lord? Have you exercised that? Uh, And about wounded in service. How many of us have been wounded because we stand up at home in the workplace? Maybe it's a a relative who says, Jesse, Terry, stop being so old-fashioned. You really believe in the institution of marriage still? Yeah, I sure do. It's divine revelation here. God has made a man and a woman a certain way, and they're to be married for life, and you can't do it the other way. You can't have two men. You can't have two women. What are you, antiquated? You're so old-fashioned. See, here's the point. Bishop Sheen is asking us today to stand up for Jesus. And let's face it, right now in our church, we need more committed Catholics and Christians to stand up for their faith because the world, the devil, and the flesh are stepping on us when we don't do anything, we don't say anything. We need to stand up for Jesus. Terry, also here in the month of September, it's dedicated to Our Lady of Sorrows. Yes, it is. So, so uh, Our Lady of Sorrows revealed to us our sins and revealed to us those things that we need to know to become as holy as possible. And Our Lady of Sorrows pray for us. There's a lot of theology about Our Lady of Sorrows that a lot of people probably aren't aware of. Oh, that's quite a bit, yeah. According to the Church's teaching... According to the church's tradition with a capital T, Our Lady of Sorrows, she went through different sorrows, but specifically at the foot of the cross. Yep. And it was there that she merited different things at the foot of the cross. One of the things that Our Lady merited while standing beneath the foot of the cross was the ability to to reveal hidden things, and she knows them more than anybody else in heaven except God because of her closeness to him. So one of the things that we, it's just uh, spiritual advice. Mm-hmm. When you're going to confession, just say a quick lady, a uh, quick prayer to Our Lady of Sorrows right. to reveal to you your sins. Because according to the teaching of exorcist, she has been given the grace to reveal things to you more than any other saint in heaven, of course, except God. And so uh, as Catholics, we go to her for secret knowledge about our own life because she has the power because she's pure as it says uh saint simeon says to let the thoughts of many will be laid bare in other words god reveals through our lady of sorrows the things that we need to know you even you even i've been told by father Rippergree says pray to our lady of sorrows to know about what's happening in the life of your children well said and she'll reveal to you some areas of the life of your children that you need to pray for. And I found that fascinating when I heard that years ago. I'm saying, boy, oh boy. Yeah, I mean, uh, can you imagine? uh, The fact is, because oftentimes the devil wants to go after us that are pretty rooted in Christ and in our faith, and he wants to go after the weaker links of our family, which are generally our children. Absolutely. And, And Father Ripperger, he says that Our Lady of Sorrows, she she also can give graces to reveal the roots of these problems in our own heart or in the hearts of our family because her heart was pierced so that our hearts could be exposed. And one of the promises of Our Lady of Sorrows, she also says that I will defend you in your spiritual battles with the infernal enemy and I will protect them at every instant of their lives. Uh, You know, this month, the feast day of Our Lady of Sorrows, what you can do is start going on the Internet and pray the the chaplet to Our Lady of Sorrows. It's very short. It's like the rosary. But, you know, we can do this for the month of September. That's that's my suggestion. She also says Our Lady of Sorrows says that if you meditate on her seven sorrows, she says this. Here's another promise. She says, quote, I will help you at the moment of your death instead of seeing the diabolical 
you'll see my face, the face of your mother. So, uh, again, uh, Father Ripperger also says that Our Lady of Sorrows, standing at the foot of the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ gave her perfect coercive power over demons. It's God's will that she has this capacity. And so uh, well said. all I can say is Our Lady of Sorrows, pray for us. Well said. And Jesse, today is Wednesday. Traditionally, Wednesdays are dedicated to St. Joseph, patron of the church, the universal church. And right now, our church is under attack. So I would also encourage you to have a great devotion to St. Joseph. Tomorrow, Jesse will be out on a, a speaking engagement. Matt Arnold will be with me. And I'm going to be taking Cardinal Seurat's latest book, and talking about the four pillars he talked about serving the church right now and helping to save the church. So I want to get into that for to, uh, for tomorrow's show, so that's a little teaser for you. But just a quick note, on Wednesday we talk about St. Joseph's devotion, right? Terror of Demons. We, on Thursday, I mentioned it before, Holy the Holy Eucharist. Friday's the Passion, Death, and Life of Jesus Christ. Saturday, dedicated to our Blessed Virgin Mary. What about Sunday? The Blessed Trinity. What about Monday? Souls in Purgatory. I'm going to talk more about this tomorrow to help you keep your day centered on God. Jesse, when we come back from the break, this is an amazing story. German bishops ignore Vatican concerns, vow over the Senate, will will proceed. They're going to continue acting like they're a separate church, which, you know what? Last time I looked, when you do that, you're breaking from Holy Mother of the Church. You talk about a schism. Well, I think the German church is saying, hey, just watch us. You'll see. So we're going to talk about that much, much more. Get yourself a cup of coffee. Hey, I wanted to also remind you to sign up for the Spiritual Warfare Conference. There are already people signing up for the January conference. Go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151. We'll be back with much more here at the Virgin Most Powerful Radio Station and the Terry and Jesse Show. We'll be back with much more to help you. Welcome to our January 11, 2020 Spiritual Warfare Conference. Every year without fail, this is our most popular, well-attended event. This year's Spiritual Warfare Conference will host Adam Bly, a Catholic demonologist and an auxiliary member of the International Association of Exorcists, along with Dr. Luis Sandoval, a psychiatrist who's part of the Healing, Deliverance, and Exorcism team for the Diocese of Orange. These two gentlemen bring tons of experience and expertise in the area of spiritual warfare. This is going to be a high-information Catholic seminar. I'll be there as well, sharing some riveting stories on the diabolical and liberation found through Jesus Christ from my best-selling book, The Devil in the City of Angels. Mark your calendars, come and join us, and meet other radio hosts from Jesus 911. Contrary to popular belief, spiritual warfare is not demon-centered. It's Christ-centered. Come join us and learn how to armor up and fight the good fight of faith. Catholics, wake up. Don't hit the snooze button. Join us at St. Christopher Catholic Church, 629 South Glendora Avenue, West Covina, California, on January 11, 2020. See you then. Strength and honor in Jesus' name. Jesus said to the apostles in Luke chapter 10, Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. According to St. Boniface, in her voyage across the ocean of this world, the church is like a great ship being pounded by the waves of life's different stresses. Our duty is not to abandon ship, but to keep her on course. May our Lord help us remain ever faithful to his church to aid and defend her. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888 526 2151. Now, 
Here's Terry and Jesse. This program's rated R, righteous, respectful, and rejuvenating. Amen, brother. Can you believe <laughs> the German bishops? Uh, for years. <laughs> they are ignoring the Vatican concerns, and they're vowing that they're going to proceed with their own synod. And they're the ones, by the way, they're also funding. They're the financial funders behind the Amazon. All of the synod. money, Jesse. So Cardinal Reinhard Marx, a modernist of Munich, Germany, He's the head of the German Bishops' Conference. He's pushing forward with plans for a binding synodal assembly in spite of the fact that the, uh, there's been objections from the Holy See. Yep. So it's like, they're, it's like modernists seem to be turning on each other. As, as Our Lady said in the key to Japan, cardinals versus cardinals, bishops versus bishops. We're seeing this right here. And, and both of them have modernist leanings, by the way. Present, the people right now in the Roman Curia... Uh, many of them have modernist homosexual leanings, and same with the German bishops, but yet they're, they're fighting with each other. It says, in a September 12th letter to Cardinal Mark Ouellette, prefect of the Congregation for Bishops, Cardinal Marx insisted that the National Synod in Germany, here it is, designed to re-examine Catholic teaching on clerical authority, yep. sexual morality, and the role of women in the church must proceed. Oh, yeah. He says, uh, in the letter he says, Countless believers in Germany consider these issues to be in need of discussion. I'm just asking myself, I'm scratching my head, who wants to discuss these issues? No, no, and, uh, and notice here, and I'll talk, flip it over to Terry, he says, Cardinal Marx writes, or he suggested that the process will ultimately benefit the entire church. He says, quote, we hope that the results of forming an opinion on these issues in our country of Germany will also be helpful for the guidance of the Universal Church and for other Episcopal conferences on a case-by-case basis. So here's what Cardinal Marx is trying to do. Hey, these liberal bishops from Germany, by passing this in their particular synod, they now are saying, hey, we could use this to influence the entire worldwide Catholic Church. Terry? I just want to say, follow the money. First of all, for those who don't understand how the money's raised in Germany for the Church— it's not by passing the hat. It's a taxation. When you uh, register as a worker in Germany, you put a mark. If you're a Catholic, you're a Protestant, whatever religion, the government takes about 8% of that income that you uh, are making, and they give it to the church. So the funding comes directly from the government. And I know this is going to shock you. Are you ready? That bishop, uh, Archbishop, uh, who's uh, uh, the bishop of the Germans, uh, Cardinal Mar- Ar- Archbishop Marx, take a guess what kind of salary he's making in Germany to be an archbishop. Are you ready? $190,000 a year. What? Are you kidding me? Yes. Why? Because it's funded by the government. And so here's my point, Jess. This article is pointing out how they want to beat to their own drum. Well, when you make that kind of money, and you've got the money, you're gonna, you think you can buy it because money talks. And so that's one of the issues you know, that I consider the German church for years being way out in left field because they in America are funding the Vatican with a lot of money. And so they figure that if, hey, if I'm giving you money, uh, you better listen to what I'm saying. I'll give you an example. The analogy is here at Virgin Most Powerful. We have some people who want to give us a, a large amount of money. And they go, we want you to do X, Y, and Z with this money. But it's not part of our charism. It's not even, it's not even moral. You know what we go, tell them to do? Go pound sand. And so what I would tell the bishops of Germany is that, no, you're not a separate church. You have to be, uh, continue to go under uh, the Roman Catholic Church and not become like you know, uh, Martin Luther did in Germany and break away. Because what they're doing, Jesse, is saying, they have a better idea than what the church has taught for 2,000 years. And I say, let's pray for the German church that they'll come back to the perennial teachings of the church because if they do this, they're going to separate themselves from the vine. But here's what I also see happening, Terry. Some of the things that they're trying to promote the German church, yeah. right. a lot of people in the Vatican, mm-hmm. they're okay with it. Yep. I mean, they're, they're birds of the same feather right now because well, <clears throat> modernists, Agree with modernists, and there's a lot of people in the Vatican that are modernists right now. That's a fact. That actually agree with what the German Church is trying to do. So here's what we have. So we have the German modernist bishops define the Vatican, which I scratched my head because it's also top heavy with modernists right now. So 
the article says that uh, They're pushing the re- envelope, reflecting on the synod's potential impact. Yep. Observers note that as Pope Francis muses on the specter of schism in the U.S. Yep. in the U.S. Church in Germany, the threat is becoming real. In other words, the article is saying we're closer to a schism in Germany right now. It says, though branding their product, the Germans, a synod, Archbishop Iannone observed. German prelates are in fact constructing a particular council, unauthorized by Rome, one that aims to redefine fundamental church teaching on morality and discipline, and Cardinal Marx appeared to reject Archbishop Iannone's assessment, insisting that he and his brother bishops will conduct a consultation of our own kind that is not covered by canon law. They call this, Terry, the, the synodal way. Yeah, synodal. It's real popular. The synodal way is a process and the draft statutes should be should therefore by no means be read and interpreted through the lens of canonical instruments such as the plenary council. It's not a particular council. And Cardinal Marx seemed rankled by the Vatican intervention, telling yeah. Cardinal Ouellet, we'll I cannot see why questions about which the magisterium has made determinations should be withdrawn from any debate, as your writing suggests. In other words, Terry, Cardinal Marx is Cardinal Marx is saying, Hey, you guys at the Vatican agree with our theology, what's the beef? Why are you opposing our synod? I'm going to make the point, Jesse, that uh, statistically they're losing hundreds of thousands of uh, souls in Germany uh, because of people rejecting their Catholic faith. And I'm going to make the assessment that the reason they're doing this is they realize this, that if they continue to be what they consider antiquated, old-fashioned about you know, like women's ordination. Oh, we can't have. No, we got to have that because it's going to bring more people to sign that mark that they're Catholics. Therefore, continues our funding because we can't stop the funding. I think a lot of this is tied into the money. That that's because I always say follow the money. If they can compromise on Catholic morality and say we're broad, we want more people to come in and sign up in our church. You you can believe what you want as long as you put that mark down that you're Catholic. We continue to get money. I know that sounds cynical, Jesse, but I think it's it's true. There's a lot of truth into following the money. By the way, I won't be here tomorrow nope. or, or Friday. I'm going to be at uh, Orlando, Florida, speaking at the Catholic Charismatic Renewal Conference uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, so if uh, you have any family members out there, I'd love uh, to meet them, Absolutely. and I'd love to get some more people out there in Orlando, Florida to listen to vmpr.org. And, uh, Terry, but going back to the article here, yes, they're, they're saying— that, yeah. The the Impact. Cardinal Marx and yeah. the German modernist bishops, they're saying that the synod's being crafted as the German answer to the sex abuse crisis. Exactly. That's how they're trying to pitch it. Yep. And they're saying that the solution to the massive crisis of credibility of the church Compliment. after the discovery of numerous cases of sexual abuse, but many church watchers suspect that the assembly of these German bishops is being designed as a vehicle for a radical break with Catholic teaching. Of course. And and uh, they note that the Synod's lay contingent will be represented by the dissident Central Committee of German Catholics, and uh, they're a radical leftist group campaigning for women's ordination and an updating of Catholic teaching on human sexuality. So uh, when you reflect on the Synod's potential impact, observers are noting that as Pope Francis muses, and he talks about the specter of schism in the U.S., uh, the threats already becoming very real in Germany. And it doesn't surprise me, Terry, a lot of problems have always come from Germany. Absolutely, we go way back. Uh, Scott Hahn, in many of his lectures, yep. he talks about the reason he moved into biblical theology and the St. Paul Institute and tried to teach seminarians and priests the Bible, is he says it's because a lot of bad exegesis has oh, yeah. come from German uh, Rudolf theologian. Boltman, Cheryl. Yeah, and so Scott Hahn started a whole institute mm-hmm. really to fight the, the German biblical exegesis modernist cabal. What else do we have coming from Germany? We have the Protestant deformation, I mean reformation, coming from Martin Luther, a German a prelate. What else do we got coming from Germany? An apostate Catholic called Adolf Hitler, yeah. who was a monster. What else do we got coming from Germany? We have Nietzsche. Who was uh, uh, a you know a, 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 phil- a philosopher who yep. promoted atheism right. and has infected the thinking of many Catholics, Terry? So a lot of problems have come from that country, and they continue to happen right now 
under the present leadership of Cardinal Marx. Well, let me just give you an example, Jesse. In 2008, when Pope uh, Benedict XVI went to visit Germany, where he's originally from, right? And I have this on YouTube. You've seen it, Jesse. When the Holy Father gets off the plane to greet the bishops, they don't want to shake his hand. If that doesn't speak volumes, Jesse, about the bishops in Germany, they're, they're, they, they don't want to hear orthodox teachings of the church. And I can tell you this, and this is my take on it. You're, they say they want a solution to the sexual misconduct in the church. They're never going to give the solution of, and they, they don't teach him about Hermana Vitae. They don't talk about chastity. It's all a bunch of gobbledygook that's coming where they're talking about liberalism and they think the solution is compromise. And I think that's why they're losing membership. Jesse, I saw the statistics as they lose hundreds of thousands of members a year in Germany. They're realizing they got a crisis on their hand. They're not going to be able to get their salaries. Okay, I'm sorry, but that's what happens because the funding stops. So what's the, what's the meeting about? How do we keep the funding going? Well, we compromise. And I pray for the German church. And I hate to have to even say this about bishops because they're successors of the apostles. But you know what, Jess? We've seen this happen over and over again. Think about what St. Ignatius, yeah. I mean, St. Athanasius. Some of them are successors of Judas, let's not forget. Yes, and, and St. Athanasius, uh, when he was alive in the 4th century, 80% of the bishops were Judas bishops, Jesse, and he got exiled five times. So don't be surprised when you see a bishop preaching something contrary to what the church teaches. It's just, we've been here before, but now we need to pray for these men and also stick to our guns and our holiness. Tomorrow, when Jess is gone, we're going to talk about Cardinal Seurat, who's one of the great cardinals of the Catholic Church. I hope he's the next pope, in my opinion. But he, is, he came out with a new book that gives us the four pillars to the solution to the crisis. You'll see how different it is from the German bishops. Yeah, uh, Terry, we're going <laughs> to... One of the things that, yeah. as Catholics, we have to remember yeah, what's that, is that Jesus Christ, the Catholic Church is a ship. Yep. Good and analogy. Jesus Christ is, he's the one that runs the ship. Yep. Okay? Mm-hmm. A lot of people are saying, you know, we're like, Lord, wake up! Because the captain of the ship, he's, uh, you know, he's taking us through some very turbulent times and turbulent waters. Let's remember that Jesus... The, the captains of the ship, they're going to change every couple of years. Those are called popes, okay? Yeah. okay? Yeah. But ultimately, let's not forget who runs the ship ultimately, who governs this ship, who's in control of the ship, who's in control of the weather, who's in control of the violent waves and the storm and the thunder. His name is Jesus Christ. And though some of us think that he's asleep right now like the apostles did, yeah. no, 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 no. He's wide awake. He knows what's happening. He's steering us home. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And he's counting on you to be his hands and his feet. We'll be right back. Hands on Apologetics, you have entered into Virgin Most Powerful's Apologetics Dojo, where we go wall to wall with... Defending, explaining, sharing the faith. Master apologist, Carlo Broussard. Carlo, welcome to Hands On Apologetics. Hey, Gary, it's great to be back in the dojo, my friend. Master apologist, Ken Hensley. Welcome to Hands On Apologetics. Good to see you again, Gary. Good to be with you. Michael Barber, welcome. You have entered into the Virgin Most Powerful's Apologetics Dojo. Gary, thanks for having me on. We are chatting with Master Apologist Carl Keating. Gary, it's great to be back with you. Coming into the dojo is our good friend Steve Ray. Thank you, Gary. Good to be here. Tim Staples, welcome to Hands-On Apologetics. Hey, it's great to be with you, Gary. Thanks for having me on. Join many others in Gary Machuda's Apologetics Dojo. We have some of the best Catholic apologists in the nation. Streaming live weekdays from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific. Hands-on apologetics on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Hi, this is Eddie Chavez, host of Jesus 911. I want to take this opportunity to let you, our listeners, know about an event being held here at the Sacred Heart Chapel in Covina. We will be celebrating the Feast of St. Michael the Archangel on September 28th. 2019, beginning at 9 o'clock with Mass in the morning and talks to follow. 
Ruben Nava and myself will be speaking. So come and hear us talk about St. Michael and Our Lady. Come join us. And we'll see you there. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. St. Peter, Damien, pray for us. Hey, Jesse, I just knocked off some push-ups, buddy. I'm ready. <laughs> you got me all fired up, man. You know why, Jesse? When I said that we have to be the feet and hand of Jesus, he's counting on every single one of us, our prayers, our actions. I mean, we're, we're basically, Jesse, what we're up right now is, remember we say, reporting for duty, sir? Who are we talking? Not to Jesse, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We got to report for duty because the church is taking on water. And so, you know, when we talk about these horrible things, whether it's the Bishop's Conference or our next topic, you know, regarding homosexuality, I mean, why we don't do this because we like to do it. We're We're raising up a red flag and saying, folks, be careful. This is what's going on. We need to we need to reject the error and accept the truth. That's right. I can't believe that I'd ever be. No, I'd ever think. Are you kidding me? Uh, that there would be th many theologians of the Catholic Church, many clergy that have sympathy for homosexuality mm -hmm. and uh, false sympathy. If, 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 if yeah, that's false compassion. If we accept this, this is the destruction of the Catholic Church's doctrine. Why, Jesse? Tell us why. And I'll tell you why, because you can't separate the Catholic gospel from morality. That's right. Because morality is part of the gospel. Amen, brother. We don't, we don't have a faith alone gospel where you could just have faith in Jesus and not change your life, not have a metanoia of heart and change your behavior and, and embrace virtue and moral excellence and holiness. That's not the gospel. Nope. And uh, David Cardin who uh, he's he's a very interesting he's a very interesting per person. He wrote this article, "Sympathy for Homosexuality Means Destruction of the Catholic Church." Mm -hmm. He's a lifelong Democrat. Mm -hmm. He's former professor of uh, Rhode I Providence, Rhode Islands. Uh, he's also he was also the state state senator for the Democrat Party uh, of Rhode Island for many years. He's a practicing Catholic. And as he writes this article, I'm just saying, like, wow, this guy's had I don't know how he can embrace his party platform. He says many factors have contributed to the 50 or 60 year decline of Catholicism in America. But one of the most important and in the recent decades, the most important is the sympathy felt for homosexuality among many priests, bishops and lay people, especially liberal or progressive lay persons. Remember, this guy is a Democrat writing this, yeah, that's a, a college professor Democrat. So I'm I'm telling you, this is not you know Pat no, Buchanan not right writing this. No, you know this is not uh, you know Father John Newhouse writing this or, nope. or Father Rutler. Nope. He says, I'm not talking only about those who are homosexual in their orientation or who have been homosexual in their conduct. I'm talking also about a more general sympathy, the sympathy felt by those who say something like this to themselves. Well, it's unfortunate, <laughs> but it's not really horrible. Yeah. At least not when they refrain from molesting underage boys. It's hard not to sympathize with gay priests when one remembers that they are all that they're all probably born this way. So this whole born this way wrong. It's it's the LGBTQ propaganda lie. You tell the lie often enough, Jess. Which is one of the great manifestations of present day atheism. Yep. And uh, this is pure effective propaganda that's been used. And most Catholics have bought into this hook, line, and sinker in most Catholic parishes. It's played a major role in persuading most Americans, including Catholics, to drop their traditional moral antipathy to homosexual conduct, which means sodomy. And among Americans, especially in their late teens and 20s, 
there's now something close to a universal approval of homosexual sodomy. Yep. And uh, and if you stand against it, you'll be called a homophobe by your own family members, people in your parish, and uh, and the, that's the problem that we're dealing with. And David Cardin does a good job of, of outlining this in the in the article. Yes, Jesse. Remember at the beginning of the show when I said Bishop Sheen said, "Show me your hands." Do you have scars from giving? Show me your feet. Are they wounded in service? Show me your heart. Have you left a place for divine love? See, we can't say a word without being persecuted when it comes to homosexuality. As a matter of fact, Jesse, for almost for over 2,000 years, the church has consistently been very faithful teaching the, that uh, marriage is between a man and a woman, not two women, not two men. And now we have people inside the church who are really pushing hard to change this teaching. And like Steve Ray said in our Monday interview, people left the church. He said, I'm leaving the church because I don't see the church standing up for its moral values that it has taught for 2,000 years. Well, I'll tell you what, my friend, if I could talk to you, come on back home because just stick to the perennial teachings of the church and you'll be, in, you'll be fine. But Jesse, this article points out how... A decent person, above all, a decent Christian who believes that love your neighbor is the greatest commandment, doesn't blame somebody for a trait that he or she is born with. You see, here comes the lie again, Jesse. And so we don't blame a person for being born with dark skin. Right. Therefore, we shouldn't blame a person for being born with sexual attraction to persons of the same sex. Wrong. See, totally You different. see where that's wrong, Jesse? I mean... This is unbelievable. And while it's not totally unfair to ask persons with same-sex attraction to abstain from acting on those um, attractions, it's pretty unrealistic to do so given how powerful are the human drive for sex and the human need for intimate affection. Jesse, if I have, you know, you and I are married women last time I looked, okay, bro? But Jess Romero and Terry Barber are called the chastity. What? Yeah, we've had many children with our wives, right? Yeah, that means we're faithful. Jesse and Anita are faithful for life, okay? Terry Barber and Mary Danielle are faithful for life. And, you know, no excuse to say, well, he's got urges, he's got, you know, this or that. Get get out of here. It's very simple. Chastity is for everybody. And when you try to make exceptions because someone has same-sex attraction, that's not charity. That's a lie. But here's the problem. Here's what we're up against. Oh, yeah. And here's the here's what I call the diabolical disorientation. Uh, the, uh, the the Vatican has basically deconstructed the John Paul II Institute. Now you have that. Yep. You have professors there that are that are pro homosexual. Yep. And that w- that are are going okay. to attempt to yep. dismantle humanae vitae piece by piece. Of course. Using using their influence at the John Paul II Institute. Yep. Secondly, you have German bishops, uh, the Amazon Synod, very friendly, many dioceses, many, entire bishops' conferences, very pro-homosexual friendly. Yep. Then you have a Catholic priest named Father James Martin. Pray Nobody's put a stop to him. The Pope hasn't put no, a stop to him. Nobody's put a stop to him. Not a stop. He's, they've endorsed he's him, Jesse. He's the country. He's all over television. He has more social media presence than any Catholic priest, oh. and he's promoting uh, a pro homosexual theology, and nobody's stopping him. This is confusing many Catholics. Are saying, "What's going on here?" There's a double standard. The church teaches this, but I see something else. Uh, you know, in the real world, as 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 I land the plane and look at the Catholic landscape. Yeah, Jesse, Saint Pope Pius the Tenth had a very good statement, and I I will pull it up again. I mentioned it the other day to everybody. Here's what he said. Already, here it comes. He says, while Jesus was kind to sinners, he did not respect their false ideas. He loved them all, but instructed them in order to convert them and to save them. That's what we try to do here at Virgin Most Powerful with clarity and charity. Pope St. Pius X, please pray for us because we need that clarity right now, Jesse, because what's happening is people are using a false compassion to let someone wallow in their errors. People want to build the false religion right now. Exactly. If you if you read paragraph six seventy five of the Catechism, mm-hmm. it says that the precursor to the Antichrist is going to be a false religion. Right now, you have modernists in the church that are trying to set up a parallel false religion, much like you see in communist China, 
you got the real church and a false church under the communist government. This is what we see happening now. And by the way, this is a precursor to the Antichrist, a false religion. It's in the documents of Vatican II, paragraph 675, 676, and 677. How are they going to do this? The article says they're going to say, hey, this is just a development of doctrine. Baloney. That's what the liberal progressives are going to use. They're going to say, you know, just like moral doctrine is developing in, in, in certain directions with the death penalty and, and other and a Morris Laetitia, well, this doctrine, our understanding of homosexuality is developing. You know, how are they going to, they're going to pitch it? They're going to say this. They're going to say, it, it's just two people that genuinely care for each other and care for the well-being of one another. Of course, they're not going to deal with the sodomy issue yeah. uh, that's offensive to God. They're just going to try to use language that appeals to millennials. They just care for each other. Another element in this article, Jesse, I'd like you to comment on. It used to be the case that Catholics were good at logic. You know, two and two equals four. That's you cool. know, was objective truth, right and wrong. Can you appreciate this, Jesse, that for the last 50 or 60 years, Catholics kind of got thrown out the logic about, you know, right and wrong. It was kind of like, I have your tr- you have your truth and I have my truth. Do you think that plays into the element of homosexuality? That came in from the French Revolution. Yep. Father Mitch Pacwa talks about this. Yeah. And uh, the French Revolution introduced the idea of that psychiatry, mm-hmm. psychology, and therapy, yep. and sociology, it's, it trumps divine revelation. And so what, what, what a lot of the modernists in Vatican II did is they abandoned Thomistic thought. What is Thomistic thought? Here it is in a nutshell. It's an appeal to sacred scripture an appeal to sacred tradition, an appeal to the fathers of the church, using right reason. Did you hear that? Yeah. Using right reason. Common sense, man. Many of the fathers at Vatican II that were modernists, they've said, phooey with the scholastics, phooey with Aquinas Suarez dropped. and Thomas Aquinas and, 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 and Bellarmine, yeah. phooey with those guys. We want to bring in now the Novo Theologia, What's Which that? means we need to listen to the new voices out there like Carl Rahner, Schillebeck. like Skillebeck, yeah. like Hans Kuhn. Oh, my God. Because they, they, they have a, 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 a more uh, a higher understanding of theology because it's interfaced with psychiatry, psychology, sociology. So these are the guys we look forward to. Terry, this is why Catholics don't know how to think right now. Because we've abandoned scholastic thought. And we're going to get right back to that. Hey, I got some good news stories to, uh, right after this break. Are you kidding me? Get yourself a cup of coffee. This is one of my, this is my favorite story to share regarding life issues. When we come back, we'll share that much, much more on the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Pray for us. We'll be right back. We got Ernesto from Long Beach. You know, I just wanted to comment, you know, and I just wanted to thank you guys. And I kind of wanted to encourage people that are listening, maybe that are not donating, you know, because honestly, I got to be honest. I used to think you guys were a little too over the top, time, you know, yes. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, you that's know, right. If God gave us a lot, you know, and I'm, I have the blessing of listening to all this. And I just want to call all the people, you know, I got five kids, you know, and I don't make a lot of money and I'm still donating to you guys. God bless you, brother. You're amazing. We got to We have to do this. We have to do the extra. And it's not even the extra. People see it like it's extra. Kneeling for communion, saying your rosary, saying the divine mercy chaplet. It is not extra. It's what the church tells us to do. Amen. You're a good man, brother. 30 years old, 30 years old 29 years old, five kids, and I thank you guys for everything. Everybody else, man, get on fire. Fight for the truth, man. I know what I'm telling you guys. There's I no love it. out there. In Luke 7, Jesus said, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven her because she has been shown great love. According to St. John of the Cross, Christians should always remember that the value of their good works is not based on number and excellence. Their value is based on the love for God that prompts them to do the works. 
May we always be motivated by true love for God and not worry so much about what we do, but why we do it. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. We are blessed by the best, and we want to tell the rest. Amen, brother. I got Terry, good news. a great news tell story. It. No, you read it this first, story. Jesse. This you is tell powerful. I'm so excited when I hear pro-life stories like this. Tell us about it, Jess. Yeah, okay. So there was a woman who was raped. She was uh, from uh, Bogota. Oh, no, from Argentina. Yeah, from yeah, Argentina. Colombia, I thought. Or Colombia. Yeah, that's uh, She's in, in, in Colombia. Go ahead. So Bogota, Colombia. She was, this, she had a difficult choice. Can you imagine you're raped at the age of, in her mid-20s? Oh, my gosh. And, uh, and she kept her baby, but the good news is her baby's now a Catholic priest. His name is Father Alfar Velez. He recently honored his mother by sharing publicly about the sacrifices that she made for him after being raped as a young unwed woman in Colombia. Okay. Yep. So uh, she had a difficult choice, but uh, can you imagine she's given the church a Catholic priest who's now an advocate for life? And Father Velez says, my mother's greatest pride was having defended life. I love So this it. happened when she was 27 years old. She was drugged and then raped at a party yep. by several coworkers. Uh, and she was urged to have an abortion. She rejected the idea of sacrificing her unborn baby because of the father's crime. Right. And, but, you know, of course, due to the stigma of being unmarried and pregnant, her family forced her to marry an abusive man, and uh, he continued to abuse her. And so after the father Veles was born, baby Veles, she sent him to live with his grandmother to protect him from the abuse. Wow. And he said that when he was 10 years old, he said his mother confided in him about how she was raped and, and became pregnant. And, uh, and, and Father Vela says that my mother told me what happened. She said that many people wanted her to have an abortion, and others suggested that she should sell me or give me up for adoption. Mm -hmm. And she said some people were interested in taking me in. Mm -hmm. for, uh, and uh, she says, but for me, you know, discovering all this as a priest, it was, real, it was real hard. Later, he said he went to a church to pray about the situation, and he described it as more of a complaint than a prayer because he was asking God, hey, man, why do you allow this to happen to me? And he goes, as I was shouting at God, he says, a priest came up to me and told me that I was asking God the wrong question. Don't ask why, but rather to what end? Yep. Why? To what end? In other words, he said that precisely because of his situation, my situation, that I was conceived of rape, that God was now calling me to do great things. Things. Awesome. That's what Father Velas remembered this priest telling him in conversation as he was a young man. And so the priest encouraged his encouragement, made such a deep impression on this young man, and the two became close friends that eventually Velas decided to become a Catholic priest. I love it. Today he's a missionary priest in Argentina, and several years ago he began openly sharing his story publicly in South America because, you know, they began to face intense pressures to legalize abortion. So he's not being very, very open about his story. Praise and he God. says, accrediting his mom, my mom was a woman of great faith, very faithful and very holy. And she used to say that despite this terrible circumstances, she was carrying in her room the miracle of a new life, of life which, which God had given her and which because of her convictions, she could not abort. And she said that if God had given it to her, uh, she had to discover the reason why God gave me to her. What great a great story. story. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesse, I got one more quick story like that, and then we'll go to Anonymous up in San Jose, or Stockton. Jess, you and I both know this priest. Father. Uh, I talked to him the other day. Uh, in fact. Yeah, there you go. He came to our family conferences 20 years ago, okay? 
Well, what happened was he was from South America. His mother was on the abortion table ready to have an abortion, and she realized the date was March 25th. That's the Feast of the Annunciation. The Word became flesh. And she realized that, and she jumped off the table and ran out of the abortion clinic. So thanks be to God. Well, she found out she had twins. Why? Well, when she delivered the babies, two, two young boys, two little baby boys came out. And wow, there they are. And then they become Catholic priests. Now, I'm, I'm not going to give all the details, but can you imagine this priest preaching to Jess and myself at a family conference saying, I'm pro-life. My mom was pro-life. Both of those two babies became Catholic priests. We got lots of calls. Let's see if we can get Anonymous in before we have to run out for the day. Anonymous, you're welcome. You're on the air with Terry and Jesse. Go ahead, my friend. Yeah, good morning, Terry and Jesse. Um, yes, sir. I just want to give an encouragement sure. to um, Catholics who might be uh, considering or being scandalized sure. about going to the Catholic Church. Okay. I have two Bible verses, if I can read them, please. Sure, sure. go for it. Uh, the first one is John six sixty seven. It says, so Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to leave? <laughs> yes. I get that. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go to? Well, you sir. have the words of eternal life. Amen. Amen is right. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. So this right here is where can we go to even if we're being scandalized? Yeah, there's by nowhere to go. Church. Yeah. Nowhere to go, nowhere baby. To go. Yeah. I agree. And this is the one true church, and we got to fight to keep it. Great point. The good. one holy. Well, what's your other scripture church? verse? Because that's a good and one. My, I like that. My other scripture verse is Acts uh, twenty-seven thirty-one, where Peter, uh, Saint Paul, is speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, "Unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved." So this is the ship, the Catholic Church. This is the Church of God. Right. Why would anybody attempt to leave this ship? Amen. This is very clear to me. I mean, there's nowhere else to go. You got it. We need to stay. We need to stay the race to the end. Amen, Catholics buddy. just need to learn their faith and not be scandalized so easily. Well said. Please, Catholics, remain in the church. Learn your faith. Listen to Terry and Jesse, and <laughs> you guys will learn a lot. All right. Hey, Anonymous, good, two good scripture verses. Yep. I love that. You're a good I'll just Catholic. give it, I'll make it very simple, blue collar. Yeah. It, to say, it, well, first of all, hypocrisy does not nullify the truth. Remember that. Hypocrisy does not nullify the truth. That's right. And to say, well, I'm going to leave the Catholic Church because there's hypocrites. It's like saying, I'm not going to go to the gym because there's a bunch of fat people there. That makes no sense. That's precisely why you want to go to the gym, because you're a little chubby, okay? It doesn't make any sense. Or can you imagine saying, well, I don't believe that Albert Einstein, I don't believe in his, in his theory of relativity because, ah, I don't know, he was a rapist or a homosexual or a child molester. It doesn't matter what he was personally. The, the, the theory of relativity is still science. So as, as Catholics, remember, if, if, if being hurt by the church causes you to lose your faith in God, then your faith was not in God. It was in people. And our faith is in Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks like, for your I call, brother. I, well, my, my last thing, sure. is, is it okay? Is yeah, it, hit me. Go ahead. We got one more call, but go ahead. I've heard, you guys, I've heard you guys say many times that that's like leaving Jesus because of Judas. Yep. We don't want right. to. Right. That's right. Anyways, that, that's it. I'll, I'll let you guys with that. You're a good man, Anonymous. Good job, buddy. And, and, thank, and you know, I want to send you some more cards to send to your friends at church. So call us at 877-526-2151. Folks, what we've distributed is hundreds of thousands of these little cards. For all of our listeners, please consider being an advocate for the Virgin Most Powerful Radio. That's how we get new people to listen. And I got to tell you, Jess, I'm getting more letters. I got a letter just last week, an email, when I say letter, an email saying, look, if it wasn't for Virgin Most Powerful Radio, I would have left the church because I was confused. But you guys have set me straight by what we've just talked about today on today's radio show. We can't leave the, the ship. Where else is to go? And so Harry, study Jesus your faith. Jesus told us that there would be good fish yep. and bad fish in the net of Peter. It's in Matthew thirteen forty seven to 49. There go. There's going to be good fish and bad fish in the net of Peter. But Jesus says, but at the close of the age, the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous. And throw them into the furnace of fire, where their their men will weep and gnash at their teeth. So the the point of the matter is, no. is that 
in the parable of the fish net, Jesus is going to do the judgment at the end of time. When they die, they're going to be judged personally. Jesus is going to sep- do the separating, not you and I. Well said. And tomorrow's show, Jesse, while you're gone on your trip, Cardinal Seurat, his new book, has got four pillars in helping Catholics live out their Catholic faith through this crisis time. And it's an interview format, the book, from published by Ignatius Press. I think you're going to find it very informative. Our listeners are going to go, wow, I want to implement what the Cardinal is saying. And he mixes no words. He says, look, some people are going to find what I say offending. He says, I'm sorry, but I don't have an option. I have to proclaim what Jesus Christ teaches. Jess, I'm not interested in your impersonal opinion about things, okay? And I don't want people to be interested in my personal opinion. Virgin most powerful, number one, what do we do? We give what the perennial teachings of the Catholic Church teach in season and out, even when it costs us time, money, and pain. And it does cost us pain by teaching what the church teaches. You know why? Because the world is rejecting it, and there are people in the church that are worldly. That's my take, Jess. Yeah, let's go. We got somebody else uh, calling on the anonymous uh, on the phone. It, it went, actually, that's a, another call. It's not coming through. Jesse, to, okay. to close up the— to, to close Let up me the, mention one thing about the, uh, the this great news about abortion, okay? Yeah. Uh, the, the story that we just— Yeah, about the— the, Here's a— uh, Here's something that a lot of people, you know, for you to just for you to think about. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, there was a preacher and his wife that were very, very poor. They already had 14 children, and now she finds that she's pregnant with number 15, mm-hmm. and they're living in tremendous poverty back in the Middle Ages. Would you consider recommending an abortion? If you answered yes, you would you would have recommended the death of John Wesley, yep. the founder of the Methodist denomination. Yep. How about this? A father is ill with syphilis, and the mother has tuberculosis. Wait to hear this. They have had four children. One child has died. One is blind. One yeah. is deaf, and one has tuberculosis. The mother is pregnant. Would you recommend an abortion? If you answer yes, you would have recommended the death of Ludwig van Beethoven, one of the greatest musicians. How about this? A baby's born crippled and a dwarf. If that outcome had been predicted in advance, would you have recommended an abortion? If you answered yes you would have recommended the death of Alexander Pope. What about this? Number four, a white man raped a 13-year-old black girl and impregnated her. Would you recommend an abortion? If you answered yes, you would have recommended the death of the gospel singer Ethel Waters. What about this? A poor teenage girl is pregnant and unmarried. Her soldier father disowns her and the child. She would name the child after the father and raise the child while bearing the disgrace of of, of illegitimacy. Would you recommend an abortion? If you answered yes, you would, you would recommend the death of Father Joseph Moore, lyricist and composer of Silent Night. Here's the last one. A teenage girl is pregnant. She's not married. Her fiancé is not the father of the baby. Would you recommend an abortion? If you answered yes, you would recommend the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, see, Father Paul Marks, president of Human Life International years ago, talked exactly like you said. And we, through selfishness in our culture, has caused a lot of harm. Think of the two priests, the three priests that we just talked about that are priests today because mom was generous in giving life. So what's the message? Preach the truth in charity with clarity. Jesse, what state should we be living in, brother? Live in a state of grace. Don't live in a state of mortal sin. Get holy or die trying. Uh, You know what? As Catholics, if you have mortal sin, run to confession ASAP. You should be going to confession. At least once a month, according to John Paul II, Bishop Fulton Sheen, and St. Padre Pio. Pray your rosary every day, no excuses. And uh, God bless you and keep the faith. When we come back tomorrow with the Cardinal Seurat book on the spiritual life, you're going to love it. So tell your friends to tune in tomorrow at this same time. May God richly bless you and full sheen ahead here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. God bless you. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole Church, grant it love and the light of thy Spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great High Priest, May the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. 
May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.